Poblac na Heron, the Provisional Government of the Irish Republic to the People of Ireland, Irish men and Irish women, in the name of God and the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, Ireland through us summons her children to her flag and strikes for her freedom. Have been organised and trained her manhood through her secret revolutionary organisation, the Irish Republican Brotherhood, and through her open and military organisations, the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army, have been patiently perfected her discipline, have been resolutely waited for the right moment to reveal itself. She now seizes that moment and supported her by her exiled children in America and by gallant allies in Europe, but relying in the first on her own strength. She strikes the full confidence of victory. We declare the right of the people of Ireland to the ownership of Ireland and to the unfettered control of Irish destinies, to be sovereign and indefeasible. The long usurpation of that right by a foreign people and government has not extinguished the right or cannot ever be extinguished except by the destruction of the Irish people. In every generation, the Irish people have asserted their right to national freedom and sovereignty. Six times during the past 300 years, they have asserted it in arms, standing on that fundamental right and again asserting it in arms in the face of the world. We hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign independent state and we pledge our lives and the lives of our comrades in arms to the cause of its freedom, of its welfare and of its exaltation among the nations. The Irish Republic is entitled to and hereby claims the allegiance of every Irish man and Irish woman. The Republic guarantees religious and civil liberty, equal rights and equal opportunities to all its citizens and declares its resolve to pursue the happiness and prosperity of the whole nation and all its parts. Cherishing all of the children of the nation equally and oblivious of the differences carefully fostered by an alien government which have divided a minority from the majority in the past. Until our arms have brought the opportune moment for the establishment of a permanent national government representative of the whole people of Ireland and elected by the suffrages of all her men and women, the provisional government hereby constituted will administer the civil and military affairs of the Republic and in, in trust for, their, for the people. We place the cause of the Irish Republic under the protection of the Most High God, whose blessing we invoke upon our arms, and we pray that no one who serves that cause will dishonour it by cowardice, inhumanity or rapine. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valour and discipline, and by the readiness of its children, to sacrifice themselves for the common good, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. Signed on behalf of the Provisional Government, Thomas J. Clark, Sean McDermott, Thomas McDonough, P. H. Pierce, Eamon Kant, James Connolly, Joseph Plunkett. Acharja. Today we pay tribute to the momentous event in Irish history. When the brave men and women who fought in the Easter week struck a blow for freedom against the might and brutality of empire and for the establishment of an independent republic. We also remember our own comrades, whom we have lost throughout the years. These men and women dedicated their lives to fighting for a 32 county secular socialist republic. In the tradition of Tone and Connolly, Golding and McMillan, without them, we as a party would not be in existence today. Connolly and his ideas remain central to the politics of the Workers' Party. Over centuries later, we are still faced with many of the same issues, particularly in the inability of 